So now let's take a look at modifying this particular system. And we're going to call this system two. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a single phase overhead line for a CSR size. Um, we're going to connect this to the end of L1. Uh, we're going to put a load on here and show the parameters for the load. And then we're going to add a two phase underground cable that's going to be a number two aluminum size. Um, and the, the length's going to be 100 feet. And we're going to import some cable parameters from the equipment database similarly to the way we added some overhead elements. This is going to be connected to phases B and C, and then the, the billing parameters are going to be shown here. One thing I'm going to do differently now is I'm going to use load allocation to set up the calculated load values. So we talked a little bit about zoom and pan. You know, if I use the mouse button, I can go ahead and zoom in and out. Uh, you could also use these little icons up here by find it easier to use the mouse button. And then the pan, you right click the mouse and you can move this side to side. So let's go ahead and save this model here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and save this particular model. And so I don't override it. Once this is saved, then I'm gonna go ahead and save as and I'm gonna save this as sys2. So I'm creating a, a, a second system here. And you can see that the name is changed at the top. So what I need to do is I need to start modifying this. And let, let's just go ahead and turn off these calculated windows so it's less cluttered. So I can just go ahead and right click and turn these off. I can actually just right click on the calculated window, it'll disappear. And what I need to do first is I, I need to go ahead and um, add that first single phase overhead line element on here. So again, I'm gonna add this to L1. So I wanna go ahead and make sure I have L1 selected. And then I go up to the overhead icon, select it, I'm in add mode. I can go ahead and I can add my, um, overhead element. Note I don't have to set it up just yet. So I'm going to have that. I've got the overhead, the new overhead highlighted. I can go ahead and add a load. I'm going to go ahead and this time and choose this little house element for the load. And I've got this added into the circuit. Now what I need to do is I need to modify these two elements I just added. So in setting this up, let's go ahead and set the load up first. So if I go to the load, let's go ahead and change the name. So it's going to change this to consumer one. It's going to be single phase. So instead of having ABC, I'm going to make this simply phase A. I'm going to go ahead and be able to show the labels. You can see um, it's got parent information of five right now, and I'll change that in just a lit, little bit. Um, and then what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go to the billing information, and I'm going to change this. So I got 700 kilowatt hours, and then for the KVA, I've got this value here of 350. All right. And I'm not going to put anything in here for calculated load. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this blank in this case. So let me go ahead and close this. Then once I have that set up, then I can put in the information for this overhead. So the overhead, I'm going to refer to this as L2. It's going to be single phase, phase A. Go ahead and show the, the labels. Uh, you can see that the parent is L1. And then for the child element, this is uh, consumer one. So here, if you look on the left, you can see the topology to make sure you're adding this correctly. Now, what I want to do in this case is I want to go ahead and get the conductor data in. And 
Um, yeah, I, th I think I said number four before. Let me just double check this. I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave this for ought for now, just to make this the same as the notes. Um, it's actually a different size. Yeah, let me just let me just leave this as for ought for now. Let's see if this makes any kind of a difference or not. I don't think it will. Um, and then I'm going to just go ahead and keep the preferred neutral and I've got the overhead example in here already set and I can just go ahead and close this out. And then what I need to do next is I need to go in here and add the cable. So if I select L1, the cable's got a slightly different icon. So I can add the underground. Oops, let's try this again. Select, hit hiss, I'm in add mode. So I got the cable in here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use this residential icon again to add an additional load. And now I've got the underground, I've got the, the load connected up. And so then if I'm gonna go ahead and set this up, um, set up the parameter for the load. I'll do that first. This is going to be connected to phases B and C. So I got B and C in this case. Um, parent is going to be the underground cable. There's no child elements in this case. Go to the billing load make this residential and make the KWH 800 for phases B and C. And then for the KVA, let's make this 350. Okay. So got that billing load information loaded in. And then if I close this and what I need to do is I need to get some values in here for the underground cable. Now note in this case for the underground cable that I don't have anything in the equipment database. So I'm going to go through the import process again for getting a value in. So if you click on this little equipment editor, what I can do is I can go ahead and import values. I'm going to import these values from the same equipment database that I was using before. And if you look under user define, you, you see you have all these different cable types. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to load in the, the one I need in this case, which is the 2AL 15KV um, full. All right. And then what I could do is I could just copy the selected. So I don't have to enter them all in. I could just enter in what I need. And then you can see what I've got is I've got the user defined element for this particular cable. So I just basically imported one value this time. Okay, so if I go back and click OK, then I've got this cable loaded. Got this cable loaded. Um, I don't have any neutral in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose the default underground construction. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference um, in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and click this OK since I don't have to worry about this. And also, let me go ahead and get the, the length in here, which is 100 feet for this particular underground. And the other thing I forgot to do is I forgot to set this for the overhead. And the overhead length in this case is the same. It should be 100 feet. Okay. All right. 
Uh, one other thing too, just to be consistent, let me just go ahead and change the name on the underground just so it kind of matches up. So let's call this UG1. And one other thing, I can, I can go ahead and make this two phase. So let's make this phases B and C. And let me just double check my load on here. Yeah, still okay. Okay. I think we call this consumer too, so I'll make that change. And make sure I could see these labels. Okay. All right, so now I got this information in. And now what I can do is I can set up the load allocation because I don't, I didn't put any calculated load information in here. So now all I need to do is I need to do the load allocation. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume the net load is 5,000 kilowatts at a power factor of 0.92 as seen from the substation. And we're going to allocate this based on the KWH values that I put in for the billing load. So what you do in this case is you go up to the point that's, that's acting as a source in this case, go to sub. And what you'll see is that you've got this ability of setting up a control point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on. This is just basically a location where you have a measurement app. And then once this is on right here, then I could click to edit. And then it gives me another window for setting up the load allocation. Now, if we want to have 5,000 kilowatts for the circuit at the top of the feeder, we're going to put in the thousand. We got the power factor of 92%. So go ahead and put this value in, hit return. It auto populates the, um, the reactive part. Okay, 21, 29. I've got a total KW in here. You could do it by phase. If you had this broken down, for phases A, B, and C, if I had currents for phase A, B, C. But I just have a total three phase power. So I'm, I've got this total selected right here. And then what I'm going to have for the allocation method is I'm going to allocate by KWH. I could do it by transformer KVA. There's other sorts of things I could allocate by. But we're going to do this based on the KWH information. And then we're going to go ahead and use the power factor information from the top of the feeder. So I'm going to click this little swing icon right here. And um, we're not doing two or more groups in this case. We're just simply going to be allocating here um, for, for KWH. And so they have a lot of different options here. And we're just going to keep it, we're just going to keep it kind of simple here for now. So if I click in OK, then I've got this information loaded in and I've got this ready to go. Now what you need to do is you need to run a load allocation process. And so load allocation is a separate application from voltage drop. It actually runs voltage drop in order to account for losses. And so it does this iteratively using the voltage drop, but the load allocation, all it's doing is taking this 5,000 kilowatts at the power factor and it's, it's figuring out what does a calculated load have to be at these three points to give me this 5,000 kilowatts at the top of the feeder. And it's going to split it up by the KWH information that I had loaded in. Um, so anyway, when you run this, you can click on the little um, lightning bolt symbol here. It's going to run the load allocation. We didn't get any warning messages. 
And if I did this properly, and if I look at the report, I want to look at the detailed report then what I should see is I should see this report that should match what I have on the right when I did this before. As far as getting the calculated values and what gets allocated is what's shown right here. Basically, um, for these three different load points, this is what's allocating for the two phase load at the end of the cable, for the single phase load at the end of the overhead, and for the three phase um, load at, at that node that I put in the in the first part of the example. Um, it basically reflects out, you know, what were the top of the feeder measurements. If you go to the bottom, you can see that it was counting for losses. And so in the circuit, because of the circuit resistance, there's 129 kilowatts worth of losses. And so the actual load is the 5,000 that was measured at the top of the feeder minus the losses. And then you can see there's a little bit of a tolerance uh, in here where it doesn't get exactly, and then you can, you can mess around with the tolerance factor if you want to make this a little bit tighter. Um, so anyway, now I got my, my load allocated. So if I go to one of the nodes, I can take a look at, you know, what it allocated to. I can go to the calculated load and you can see now I've got load plugged in here before we before had zero. Once load's been allocated, then what you can do is you can rerun the voltage scenarios. And so I'm going to go ahead and show some of the calculated windows for some of these endpoints. And note it's already showing values because again, the load allocation actually runs a voltage drop, but I'm gonna go ahead and just run the voltage drop again anyways. And basically you get the same, same results. So what you see from this is now that I have this additional load, these voltages have dropped down a little bit more. And so now I'm, 119 volts right here. I'm 119 volts here. I'm 118.377. Um, it's starting to get low. It's not terrible, but you, we're starting to see you know, we can have some potential issues right here as, as far as voltage, maintaining voltage in the circuit. So what I'm going to do in system three uh, in, the, in the third part of the video, we're going to go ahead and stop here and we'll start up another video segment. As I'm going to go ahead and load this circuit down a little bit more and cause these voltages right here to, to sag a little bit further. And we're purposely going to create voltage issues where this is the voltage is going to get below our threshold, our design threshold. And then we'll see what we can actually do to fix the problems in this particular circuit right here.